Now, police in India have raided the homes of at least eight journalists and activists in New Delhi and Mumbai. It's all part of an investigation into suspected illegal foreign funding of a media company. Our reports suggest the raids are linked to English language website NewsClick. The journalists posted on social media saying police had confiscated their laptops and mobile phones. The New York Times reported in August that NewsClick received funding from a network pushing Chinese propaganda. The website's owners have denied the allegations. With more details, Rebecca Bundan joins us live from Mumbai. Rebecca, now, NewsClick is not the first media company to fall under such scrutiny of Indian authorities. Walk us first through the details of this case. Yes, well, certainly we've seen a number of media outlets that have been investigated in recent years in India amid allegations of financial impropriety. Uh, the BBC, uh, for example, earlier this year had its offices in India raided by tax officials. And this had le has led critics to talk about um, this potential crackdown uh, on media press freedom in the country that they are concerned about. And in this latest case with NewsClick, what we've seen is that several journalists who actually write for the news website, have uh, have seen these raids taking place. They've had mobile phones and laptops seized. Some have actually been brought in uh, for, by police for questioning, although we haven't uh, seen any re arrests reported yet. And there are reports suggesting that this is linked to these allegations of foreign, foreign funding actually coming into that company and being used to push uh, Chinese propaganda. But um, this is something that the, the news website has denied um, and then increasingly we are seeing these concerns expressed by critics uh, about press freedom in the country following incidents like this. Can we also pivot to tensions between India and Canada? Now, the Financial Times says New Delhi has demanded Ottawa withdraw dozens of diplomats from India. How will this expulsion affect already frosty ties? Well, the Financial Times has reported that India has asked Canada to withdraw 41 diplomats from the country. That's about two thirds of its diplomats here. And uh, India hasn't actually commented on this matter yet. However, we do know that once this, brow once this row broke out last month with Canada accusing India of potentially being linked to the murder of Sikh separatist leader Hardeep Singh Nijar, we did see a diplomat on either side being expelled. And then we also saw comments coming through from India uh, that same week talking about the fact that it had asked Canada to actually reduce its number of diplomats in the country, um, talking about the fact that it said that there wasn't parity in terms of Canada's diplomatic presence. So that does seem to be in line with that, although we haven't uh, had confirmation on the actual uh, numbers yet, but reportedly they have to do this by uh, next week. Now, this is a really significant development, however, and um, the, the point is as well is that it's really rare for India to actually ask uh, Western countries to actually remove, withdraw diplomatic staff um, and uh, to have uh, people being expelled as well. We have seen that in the case of India and Pakistan, for example, but it's really rare to see this um, in the case of India and a Western country. So this really goes to show how deep um, this diplomatic row is and the fact that it is really continuing between the two countries. Rebecca, many thanks for that. Rebecca Bundan, live from Mumbai.